The much-awaited Italy-Africa summit in Rome recently saw Italian Prime Minister Giorgia Maloney outlining a plan that aims to help African countries prosper in return for curbing illegal immigration. During the summit, the chair of the African Union Commission, Musa Faki, welcomed Italy's overtures for mutually beneficial relations with the African continent, but emphasized the need for concrete action and not just empty promises. Faki highlighted that a paradigm shift was required to usher in a new model of partnership and pave the way towards a more just and coherent world. He also strongly asserted that Africa is not begging for help and doesn't want to come across as one. Representatives and leaders from 45 African nations, including the presidents of Tunisia, Senegal, Kenya, the Republic of the Congo, Zimbabwe, and Somalia, recently converged in Rome, Italy, to receive details of the MATE plan, proposed by Italian Prime Minister Giorgia Maloney. The plan, named after the founder of ENI, Enrico Matte, who championed Italy's support for Africa's development in the 1950s, aims to provide more than 5.5 billion euros, 4.7 billion pounds, in initial funding for investments in sectors such as energy, education, health, and infrastructure in Africa. The summit, which took place at Palazzo Madama, the seat of the Italian Senate, was also attended by the President of the European Council, Charles Michel, the President of the European Commission, Ursula von der Leyen, and Roberta Mezzola, the head of the EU Parliament. During the event, Maloney emphasized the need to write a new chapter in the history of cooperation between Italy and Africa, adding that Africa is often misrepresented as a poor continent despite its vast natural resources and young population. She also stressed that the project would be based on a cooperation among equals and far from any predatory imposition or charitable stance towards Africa. Melanie announced the Africa plan soon after her far-right government took office in October 2022 with the primary objective of transforming Italy into an energy hub as Europe moves away from Russian gas. The leader of the far-right party in Italy, Giorgia Maloney, has made it clear that one of the top priorities for her is to help African economies prosper, which she believes will ultimately prevent the migration of people from Africa. This has been an election pledge that Maloney has so far failed to fulfill. As part of her plan, she has been campaigning for people migrating from Africa to be helped in their home countries. Central to this plan is fighting human trafficking, which Melanie believes will never be defeated unless the causes that push people to leave their homes are addressed. In her opinion, people have the right not to be forced to migrate for a better life, which is difficult to find in Europe. Melanie is keen to position Italy as a pioneer in boosting European clout on the African continent, and she believes that the presence of EU leaders at the summit confirms Europe's support for Italy's initiative. Ursula von der Leyen, the president of the European Commission, has also been supportive of the initiative, saying that this is a moment of intense and renewed cooperation between Africa and Europe, because not only our destinies are aligned, but also interests are aligned more than ever before. According to Roberta Metzola, a Maltese member of the European Parliament, 12 of the 20 fastest growing economies in the world are in Africa, and when Africa prospers, Europe and the world will prosper too. Raffaele Marchetti, a professor of international relations at Louis University in Rome, believes that Maloney is taking advantage of the weakened positions of France and Germany in Africa to increase Italy's influence. The plan was received with mixed reactions, with some expressing optimism about its potential benefits, while others were skeptical about its execution and the capability of the parties involved to follow through. Ricardo Maggi, the president of Pew Europa, a small left-wing party voiced his concerns about the plan's execution. He said that there was still a lot of confusion surrounding the objectives of the plan and questioned how it would be implemented. He also questioned the reliability and credibility of Ursula von der Leyen, who was present at the summit, citing her previous involvement in failed deals. However, Anna Bono, a professor of African history, was more optimistic about the plan and believed that it was an opportunity that Italy should embrace. She emphasized the need to find African leaders who genuinely want their countries to develop and are willing to move away from viewing their countries as property to be exploited. In a separate development, Albania's constitutional court ruled in favor of a controversial deal signed between Italy and Albania to host two holding centers for people rescued in Italian waters. 
The deal was announced by Maloney in November and would initially see the non-EU member state host about 3,000 people, but ultimately process up to 36,000 people per year. Recently, it has been reported that a deal has been made between Italy and Albania, which has been the subject of criticism from human rights groups. The deal involves the relocation of people rescued by Italian boats to Albania. However, minors, pregnant women, and other vulnerable individuals would be taken to Italy. This agreement has been tacitly endorsed by the European Union, but some critics have raised legal difficulties with the arrangement. The agreement was blocked by Albania's constitutional court in December, with the chief judge, Olta Zasaj, announcing a hearing to determine whether the agreement violates Albania's constitution. Critics have compared the agreement to the UK's deal with Rwanda and have suggested that Tirana would effectively have to cede a portion of its territory to Rome for Italy to exercise its jurisdiction in Albania. Albania's top court issued a statement indicating that the agreement would not harm Albania's territorial integrity. The ruling by the court comes after Italian MPs voted in favor of the agreement. The lower chamber of parliament backed the protocol by 155 votes to 115, along with two abstentions. The text is expected to be approved by the Senate. Despite the criticism, the deal is expected to proceed, and it remains to be seen how the agreement will be implemented. Let us know what you think about this new Italy-Africa alliance and what could be the possible implications of this on the average African.